Hey all, Tom Rand here from Tom's Big Spires. Well, a couple months ago I put up a versus video which was D. diamantinensis versus C. pubicans, And a lot of folks chimed in and said, hey, when can you do an update on your D. diamantinensis? It's been a while. And I was like, wait a minute, I just did one. Well, then I went back and realized I haven't done one in like five or six years. So as luck would have it, I had a female that had just molted. She's a young adult now. She needed a new enclosure. So it was time to do a rehousing. So, well, here we are. So what we're going to do today is do a rehousing, take a look at the care of D. diamantinensis. This is the second one I've raised up to a, an adult. She's doing great. And we got some good footage of here. Billy was definitely on point. Plus, I got some older footage I can show off so you guys can see just how gorgeous these spiders are because I think a lot of folks in the hobby see them and realize that they're New World tarantulas, which a lot of the New World tarantulas don't sport those vibrant blue colors and then they freak out and ask, hey, are these a good beginner species? So we'll talk a bit about that as well. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at D. diamantinensis or the Brazilian blue beauty. All right, so we're about to rehouse my Delicatheli diamantinensis or a Brazilian blue beauty or a Brazilian dwarf blue beauty. I think it's got a couple common names. Picked this one up, I think, mid-2022 from Fear Not Tarantulas. At that time, it was a third of an inch or 0.762 centimeters. The good news about this species, they start off super tiny and I've had a lot of folks that picked them up after seeing them in my videos went, oh my gosh, you're not kidding, they're super tiny, but they grow very quickly, which is great because nobody wants to have a teeny, teeny, tiny sling for that long. Now, as far as what I put them in, I'll talk about this here is what I've raised four of them in so far, I think. I think I had a male three females. We're going to open this up and obviously you can see it webbed right up the top. So this needs a new enclosure, but this one here, this is the juvenile enclosure. I usually move them into these when they're about an inch, inch and a quarter or so. It's one of the Sterilite ID latches. They are seven and five eighths by five and five eighths by about six inches high. I love them for juvenile spiders. They allow for a little room if they want to burrow. For Weber's, they allow a little room up top. Oh, the dimensions in centimeters, 19.4 by 14.3 by 15.2. These, they do great in these. What I usually do is set them up with a, you know, inch or so of substrate on the bottom, part moist, part dry. Then I put in some cork bark and usually some stuff for them to web to, fake leaves and stuff, because they are heavy webbers, which is why, uh, why they're kind of compared to the GBB, sometimes called the mini GBB. People that love these hate that term, but they did come out after the GBB came out, the green bottle blue or C. cayenne pubicans. Those are bigger. These are smaller. There's arguments. I put up a versus video recently where I compared the two, asked people to pick, and there's split 50 50 between which one people like. I love them both. GBB is always going to have a special place in my heart, though, because it's one of the first tarantulas I raised up from a sling. Now, with slings, they are teeny tiny, so I'd start them in dram vials. What I usually put is about an inch of somewhat moist substrate at the bottom. Uh, fake leaf so they can web to it, give them some room up top because they're going to web all the way up through the top. Now, for the adult enclosure here, we're getting a little, a little more creative with my enclosures lately. What we have here is one of the, I believe this one's a primal primal cage, and I don't think he's selling anymore, which is a shame. He did a nice job, but there's a lot of folks out there making this exact size and the exact style. It is 8 inches by 12 inches by 8 inches, or 20.32 centimeters by 20.32 centimeters by 30.5 centimeters. Inside, I have a piece of cork bark for a hide. I have another piece of cork bark just to kind of give it some layers. We have a piece of sandblasted driftwood with some fake plants glued to it. We have some grapevines. And again, we want to give it a lot of anchors to web to because what, what's hopefully going to happen is she's going to start off in here and start webbing out over here. The, we've got some leaf litter because I like the way the leaf litter looks. And again, they can sometimes work it into their webbing. And the substrate is a mixture of peat. Cocoa fiber with a little bit of vermiculite. Vermiculite wouldn't be needed for this because we're not going to keep it overly moist. What we will do is after we put her in, I'm going to put a little water dish over here. And then what I'll do is overflow the water dish. And as far as moisture is concerned, you don't need to go nuts with moisture on these guys. Keep them a little bit moist as slings. Little, again, a little bit moist as juveniles. Moisten down one quarter. I like to sprinkle water on the webbing when I feed them. And then as adults, there'll be a water dish. I'll overflow it so it's a little bit moist in the corner. And then when I feed them once a month or so or every couple of weeks, I will sprinkle some water on there. So what we're going to try to do now is get her out of here. Now, we do have, I already told Billy, there's no stress for her because I do have footage of these guys eating and a couple of one out and about. I don't think it's this one though, but anyway, people want to see how beautiful they are. They can see it. What we're probably going to do, I do want to try to see her 
but we're going to pull the webbing out, maybe put some of the webbing in here so she has something to start webbing to. I found that the heavy, heavily webbing species seem to appreciate when you put the old webbing in, they kind of start from there and start webbing out and about. So I think she's under here. Now, a note about these guys, they are very, very fast. They've, I've had a lot of folks tell me that they're pretty docile, but they can boogie if motivated. And I don't know. I think she's under. I think she's in there. So what I'm going to do, let me get the water dish out of here. There's probably two or three of these in here. I'm waiting for it to bolt out. Ah! Just kidding. <laughs> Oh, there she is down in there. Up, 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 up. She's coming right out. I don't know if you can get a shot of her. What I'm going to do, you do this. See her down in the thing? There she is, poking out. I don't think it's focus. There we go. Gorgeous blues. And a lot of people will argue these are more beautiful than the GBB because the blues pop GBBs look a little more drab unless they're under the white light. I, I uh, the right light. I think they're both beautiful, but these guys do really pop. And you can see some of the abdomen has that orange, just a gorgeous, gorgeous blur. Great shot too. This might end up being our thumbnail shot. All right, so what we're going to do, now we got some footage of her. I don't know if this will, if she'll stay in here. Nope. Aw. Oh. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this webbing. Let me get the water dish out of here. All right, this isn't, geez, Louise. I'm going to put this one in here. Make sure she's not boogieing. If you want to get some shots yeah, of okay. in there. Yeah, okay, but I, I was going to try to... Oh, 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 oh. Where is my catch coming here? I want to get shots of her while I kind of arrange this and let me know if she's going to go out. Dang, they're gorgeous. I actually stopped what I was doing to take a look at this. Um, I don't like the way the weapon is looking. It's a little kind of... Um. No, no, no. Oh, you little booger. Oh, Lord. No, she's actually being really, well, let me not jinx it. She's not teleporting yet. There she goes. <laughs> you little booger. There we go. There she is. What a beauty. And this one's probably, I mean, I haven't seen her all that much. She's been rather reclusive. Probably about three inches or so. So she's close to being full grown. They get to be about three, three and a half inches or so. So pretty much a true dwarf species. You got good views before, so I, don't, I wouldn't worry too much. All right, let me leave her in here while I try to tweak this a little bit. This sounded so good on paper and now I'm screwing up everything I did. Let's get this piece out. Put this piece in here. Ooh, old webbing. Drip it in there. And you know, what the heck. I've been trying to give them more options with the cocoa, uh, with the cocoa fiber dirt board, with the cork bark because Again, a lot of times what we do is we set up enclosures and we put in like one hide and they don't necessarily want that hide. So I try to give them a couple options. So what I do is just drape this in here. Pull out the mold. Look at this. Look how many molts are in there. There's a little teeny one. All right. She'll fit through there. Yep. Perfect. She's right under there. So I'm thinking this will give her a lot. I mean, this is like so much room for her to kind of do her webbing. 
I, I knocked off, I had all those things arranged in there perfectly, and I ruined them all. So this will be her adult enclosure. She's not going to get much bigger than that, and I will obviously update folks when she starts webbing. But as far as keeping these guys for moisture, again, as slings, I keep I make sure the the substrate doesn't dry out completely, but I try not to overdo it with moist substrate. And then you can dribble a little water on top of the actual webbing when they start webbing up because it gets very difficult. Sometimes they web up the whole enclosure and you can't get the moisture to get down into the bottom into the substrate. Juveniles, again, like with that sterilite ID latch, I had the water dish. I would flood the area around it. So give a moist corner. And then with an adult, uh, as I said earlier, there'll be a little water dish in here and I will overflow it a bit. As far as temperatures, when I first raised these, it was back before I had extra heat in the tarantula room. So it would sometimes hit 60, uh, high 60s in the winter. They grew great. I had zero issue with them growing. Uh, right now, the tarantula room in the wintertime is right around 73, 74 degrees. In the summertime, it's mid 80s, 80 to mid 80s or so. So they seem to do well, regardless if it was a little cooler or a little bit warmer. Growth rate, very quite fast for these guys, which is great again, because they start as little teeny tiny slings behavior. They are, this is one when I first read about them, a lot of folks talk about how tame and laid back they were and even handleable. I'm not into handling spiders, but folks were talking about how theirs were very handleable. That one there was very well behaved. My other female was very, very, very skittish and shy. Usually what happens, the only complaint I hear from people is they will do a lot of webbing. And unlike a GBB that usually sits on top of its webbing, unless it's molting, these guys will build their little web tunnels and they'll hide in them. Now, do I catch mine out and about? Yes, but usually as soon as you disturb the enclosure, they bolt back into the webbing, which I've had some folks say, yeah, I wish I just could see mine more. But when you see them, it's worth it. And then others say theirs are a little more bold and visible. I had somebody that said that they had one that's right out in the open all the time, hangs right out in the webbing. So again, just like any like people, they all have their own different personalities. Now, pros for these guys. I have a lot of folks ask if they should get one as a beginner species because they see them, they find out that they are new world and they think, oh, smaller new world, this would be a good beginner. Pros, they are very, very hardy. They grow quickly. A big pro is there are no urticating hairs. This, unlike the GBB, which I both of mine went through stages where they did a lot of kicking, these guys don't have the urticating hairs, so you don't have that. They are absolutely gorgeous, and they're smaller, only 3.5 inches to 9 centimeters or so. So that a lot of folks will find the smaller tarantulas to be less intimidating at first. Cons, they are teeny tiny as slings. They are super, super fast, especially as slings. I've had ones bolt, and they're almost teleporters at that uh, stage. Later on, they slow down a little bit, but they can still move if motivated. And again, the heavy webbing can be a pro or a con. I love heavily webbing spiders. However, some folks will point out the fact that because these web so much, you don't see them all that much, which can be kind of upsetting for folks who want to see their beautiful blue spider out in the open. Now, as far as feeding, I've had people panic because they get those teeny tiny slings in. They're like, what am I going to feed them? My favorite thing to feed them are cricket drumsticks, which is where you grab a cricket's leg. They'll allow the leg to detach as they run off and try to escape. And you drop that leg into the opening of their webbing when they're slings, and they'll come up and feed off of those. That's what I raised this one on. You can also do pre-killed. They'll eat pre-killed. They'll scavenge feed. So I've had folks go, yeah, I went out and brought the, bought the flightless fruit flies for them. I have never, I, flightless fruit flies are just an extra pain in the butt for me during feeding time. I don't use them. Could you use them? Yes. Are they necessary? No. If you use whatever you're currently feeding your other spiders, if it's a larger cricket, feel free to kill it and then chop it up a little bit, put a piece in there or a larger roach and it'll do just fine. And as far as the hunting ability, these guys, they're awesome hunters. Anything hits that webbing, they'll come right out and snatch it up. Don't worry, I'm going to have footage. I can put footage okay. over this. So they'll come right out and snatch it up. And they have no problem taking down decent sized prey items. So once they start putting on some size, I start dropping in medium crickets. This one will take large crickets, no problem whatsoever. Or large red rudders, smaller dubia, medium sized dubia, or large mealworms will work perfectly fine. So there we go. Delicatheli diamantinensis, the Brazilian blue beauty, awesome spiders. I'm glad I was able to show this one off of it because I've had a lot of folks asking about it, especially after we did that versus video and folks pointed out I hadn't done an update in a while. So here is the update. Here's how to keep them very easy to keep, very rewarding to keep. And again, I will obviously do an update once this one does some decorating and fills its entire enclosure with webbing. 
So again, can somebody new to the hobby potentially raise one of these up as a sling? I do think they're one of the easier slings to raise up, which is great. They're hardy. They are, don't require an over-the-top moisture levels. They grow very, very quickly. They eat great. A lot of things you want to hear when you're growing up a sling. The problem is they are super fast. And I have had some people that have contacted me that said they were a little freaked out when they went to rehouse or house their spiders and realized just how quickly they can move. So that's something you need to have in the back of your mind. So I think for the right person, yes, these could be great ones to grow up. For somebody looking up to grow up their first sling, these would be a great one to start with. Just be aware of that speed. And then the argument rages on as far as which one is a better looking spider or a better spider, the GBB or the D diamantinensis. Honestly, guys, I love both. The GBB has a special place in my heart because I raised up two slings years ago. They were some of the first slings I ever raised up. So I love them, but I also love D diamantinensis. So I could honestly not pick between the two. And I can illustrate that by the fact that I will always have both species in my collection. As far as which one's better, it, it's depending on the person that's looking at them. The beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The nice thing about this hobby is there are so many different spiders to pick from that everybody can have their own favorites. We all love the same spiders. This would be a very, very boring hobby. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate it. Click the little circle up in there. I'm going to put the other video down here, the Diamantinensis video, and then something else up here. As always, you take the time to comment. I'll take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days because I tend to get busy. I tend to get a lot of comments. Guys, stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.